Graham here, Living the Dream in 2022, and this is part 12, and therefore the last episode in our two-step, two-state adventure. In the last video, Fiona and I left you at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport with 10 minutes to spare, rushing between our flight that had just arrived from Atlanta in Georgia, hoping to catch the 9.30 KLM City Hopper flight across to Glasgow. Of course, the question we left you with in that last episode was did Fiona and I actually manage to catch the 9.30 flight to Glasgow or did we have to hang around Schiphol for six hours waiting to catch the 3.30 service? Truth be told, guys, I had absolutely no plans to vlog a short haul inter-European flight on board KLM, especially not in economy. How exciting is that? going to be. However, it was an absolutely gorgeous day when we landed in Schiphol from Atlanta. It was still a beautiful day when we departed for Glasgow. We were also on board one of my favourite little commuter aircraft, of course the Embraer ERJ190. So I thought, why not? Let's go and see what KLM have to offer on one of their inter-European city hopper flights. We start episode 12 where we left off in episode 11 and that of course is at Schiphol International Airport in Amsterdam. Rushing between our arrival gate from Atlanta, Georgia and of course gate D6. Which at Amsterdam Schiphol has always been where I've departed when flying on board a KLM City Hopper service. Between here in the Netherlands and of course the UK which is not in Schengen. Given that we had only 10 minutes between our flight arriving from Atlanta and our flight boarding to Glasgow. Glasgow. There were two things in Fiona's and my favour this morning. First of all, we had arrived at the D gates, so our walk to D6 was very short. Secondly, our flight to Glasgow had been delayed 20 minutes. So when we arrived at gate D6, which of course is the KLM City Hopper bus gates here at Amsterdam Schiphol, we were feeling pretty positive that we would make the 9.30 service. So with our boarding passes scanned and our passports checked, Fiona and I were on our way to the line where the bus to our aircraft was already boarding. I used to hate being on buses between the aircraft and the terminal or the terminal and the aircraft. But as I've got older, I've learned not to be on a rush so much. And as a result, these aircraft bus gate transfers brings the inner av geek out in me because you get a whole different perspective of the airside operations at an airport, including seeing all of the wonderful planes. And from a KLM perspective on these remote stands, you will see nothing but Embraer aircraft. And that's because a number of years ago, KLM completed their fleet refresh of their city hopper fleet from Fokker 70s and Fokker 100s to Embraer 190s, 175s and more recently the new E2. And here we are arriving at our airborne chariot, a KLM city hopper Embraer 190 which was going to take us across the North Sea to Scotland. And following Fiona off the bus and onto the tarmac you get an incredible perspective of these amazing machines. One of the best features of the Embraer ERJ series of aircraft is the seats are in a 2-2 configuration. I should say here in Europe that they're all in a 2-2 configuration, but in some of the services that you would get in the United States, first class can be in a 2-1 configuration. Even in economy, the seats are slightly wider than you would find on board the Boeing or the Airbus narrow body aircraft. And even better for travel vloggers like me, the windows are also larger than you would find on equivalent Boeing or Airbus aircraft.
after a further delay here on the ground at the D6 stands at Schiphol, the pilot had said that he wanted to hold the aircraft back in a bid to get all of the transfer bags on board. That left Fiona and I reassured that even with a 10 minute transfer between our flight from Atlanta and this KLM City Hopper service to Glasgow, our bags were now on board. Yeah, right. We did have a relatively short taxi to the runway here at Schiphol this morning because jumping over to flight radar 24, we would be departing on runway 24. With the right hand turn shortly after takeoff in the direction of Helicom, Harlem, and Zanford on Zee. We would then make our way across the North Sea in a northwesterly direction, making landfall overhead Newcastle upon Tyne. And then we would make our approach to Glasgow from the northeast, overhead the Campsies and Kirkintilloch, before descending over Mulgay and Clyde Bank, finally landing on runway 23. And as you can see, it was still an absolutely beautiful morning here at Amsterdam Schiphol International Airport. <laughs> Most international visitors to the Netherlands tend to just go into Amsterdam. And let's just say they take the advantage of the entertainment available in that wonderful European city. Anyway, if you ever travel to the Netherlands, please guys take a trip out of Amsterdam and go to the fantastic coastline. There are some wonderful coastal towns, even some tourist resort type towns like Zanford on Zee and try some of the incredible food and beer that's always on offer. And talking about food and drink, on this morning's short city hopper service between Amsterdam and Glasgow, we were served a cheese sandwich, orange juice and I had a coffee. And I want to remind you guys that Fiona and I are travelling in economy on this service across the North Sea. Over the decades I've travelled many times with KLM and they're probably my favourite European airline. Their service, even in economy, outstrips most other European airlines. And I'm including long haul flights as well. In fact, the last long haul flight I took on board KLM was between Amsterdam and Houston, Texas. It was on an aircraft type that I believe was unique to KLM, and that was, of course, the Boeing 747 400 Combi, which meant the aircraft was part cargo and part passenger. So, as we make our descent into a rather overcast Glasgow, I will come back to you once were on the ground and give you a verdict on this particular KLM service between Amsterdam and Glasgow in mid-April 2022. Thank you for choosing KLM. This flight was operated by KLM 
City of Boeing Corporation Middle Partners. We wish you a happy Easter and a lovely day and goodbye. And that was a great reminder from the KLM flight attendant because today was Easter Sunday. And that was a very short taxi between the runway and the international gates here at Glasgow. So as Fiona and I prepared to disembark this little Embraer ARJ190, how would I sum up our short flight on board KLM City Hopper in mid-April 2022? You know guys, it's a very sad thing to say, but our expectation is always very low on board these short-haul European services. However, for for me, KLM is the best. They're just better than British Airways in so many ways. And when you manage to get on board one of these Embraer ERJs with the 2-2 configuration, it just makes the flight even better again. There you go guys, I'm giving a thumbs up to KLM City Hopper. And in fact, all of our flights with KLM and Delta on this trip were superb. The only big negative being the four and a half hour delay on our Delta flight out to Detroit from Amsterdam two weeks earlier. And the fact that our bags never arrived on this connection from Amsterdam across to Glasgow today. And while the KLM website was really good, keeping us up to date by emails and text on exactly where our bags were en route between Amsterdam and Glasgow this afternoon, the KLM baggage agents here at Glasgow were all but completely useless. Despite KLM telling us our bags had arrived at 4 p.m. in Glasgow this afternoon, it would nearly be three days later before our bags finally arrived back at our house. So Fiona and I headed along the M8 in the direction of our temporary home here in Scotland, pondering what name to give the next video series here on the channel. And with that, it's time to bring this video to an end. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that little trip report on board KLM City Hopper between Amsterdam and Glasgow on Easter Sunday. 2022. As I said, I really like KLM. I think they offer a very good service, both internationally and on our short European routes. And sadly, this video brings our two-step, two-state series to an end. However, coming up very shortly is Montego Bay, 70 nights in the making. In the next video, I'm going to introduce that series to you. I'm going to tell you what it's all about and why we've called it Montego Bay, 70 nights in the making. So if you want to continue to follow Fiona and I as we live our dream in 2022, which is of course traveling to many different destinations, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell icon to be notified when the next video is published. So until that next video, thank you very much for watching.